let's meet some new notation. Now, this first one is not new. This is our good old wave function written in ket notation. So this is some sort of state, but we haven't explicitly said anything about what the basis is. And again, now we're going to be working with different bases, and so we have to generalize this a little bit. So state, no defined basis. Once I've written it this way, so psi of x, this is now in the position basis. And x is going to be a continuous variable, right? So this isn't necessarily, like this is going to look like a function of x in some way. And what gets confusing about this is that if you have, for instance, particles trapped in an infinite well, you have discrete energies, but there's an infinite number of them, but then the basis, the function, once you write it in the position basis, is continuous. It's a continuous function of x, not discrete per se. So the notation and the terminology gets a little bit confusing here. Now this is really important. What is this? Notice that we've switched from psi to phi. And so these are different Greek letters, and now this has this subscript. So this is actually going to be our energy eigenstate. And so what that means is it obeys the energy eigenstate equation that we take our Hamiltonian, uh, which I introduced in the previous video, we apply it to this eigenstate, which is a function of position, and that means you get back the energy eigenstate it corresponds to and the function itself unchanged. So this is a way of writing our energy, eigen our energy eigen equation, but it's now in the position basis. So that's the exact same thing as this when we had it in the energy discrete basis. So we've written that little hat on it to be like, hey, this is an operator. And again, that energy term is popping out. And here we've just explicitly written that as a function of position. So the key is that we are inherently putting different Greek letters, whether we mean a wave function that is an energy eigenstate or just, a hey, it's some sort of state. Okay? So be careful about this and uh, try to get used to using these different Greek letters correctly. And then last, we have our position operator, which is just going to be the position variable for now. So this one's pretty simple. When we talk about the momentum operator, that's going to be a little more complex. So again, really, this is the new piece here, um, but it's just important to try to keep track of the different things that we're doing. So when we do need our position operator, we can, in fact, just plop in at x. When might we see this? Well, we might want to know what the expectation value of x is. And remember that normally when we write the expectation value, we're talking about an operator. Well, so how would I write this? Back in our discrete basis, if I had the expectation value of a, I would have some specific uh, state, have my operator a bracketed. So what we can do here is now have, in fact, my state x and then my state. So this new expectation value of position really looks like everything we've done before. We're now going to have to say, well, how do I calculate this if I, in fact, have my wave function as a function of position? So we have to now define what that is, but at least this initial setup stage looks the same as it did before.